محمد Then after that he says, مَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَقُضُوهُ Whatever the Prophet gives you, take it. So the deen of Islam is acquired from the Messenger of Allah and Ahlul Bayt. And yesterday I mentioned that in order to understand Islam, in order to know the rules of Islam and its laws and its ahkam, we have to learn it from Ahlul Bayt. And the research that is done in order to know what Ahlul Bayt have said is a very difficult, very scholarly research that takes a lifetime to understand the deen of Allah, to understand what Ahlul Bayt have said. And yesterday I explained the process of ishtihad. Those who do ishtihad, what do they have to go through in order to understand what is the rule that Allah wants us to have or practice. Here, just one thing I will say before I go on. Islam means to submit to Allah's will. To submit to what Allah wants us to do. Not what we would like Allah to do. Many times when we live our lives and our relationship with Allah that we have, we are dictating, we are dictating Salawat ala Muhammad wa If he wants to come on the member, he have, has some time still. <laughs> you can't take my position that easily. <laughs> Salawat ala Muhammad You see, when we practice our life, you know, and the relationship that we have with Allah. Look at yourself and see how many times do you submit to what Allah says and how many times do you dictate to Allah what you want. When you make dua to Allah, look carefully at the dua that we are making and see are we dictating to Allah that Allah do this and do this and do this. Or are we trying to submit to what Allah has decided for us? And the fact is that Allah, out of His mercy and compassion and rahmat, has said, make dua to me and ask me anything you want. And you know what? It's like you have a child. Now you don't want that child to go on somewhere else and ask someone else for something. 
If he asks someone else, how would you feel? For example, you're not buying him something that he wants, so he goes somewhere else and asks your neighbor or ask your friend, uncle, you know, I want this, please get me this. As a father, how would you feel? You know, you would want him to ask you, and you would want to fulfill that. You would feel bad if he goes somewhere else. Allah, when He looks at His creation, wants His creation to ask Him, ask Him for things. When you make dua to Allah, Allah says, ask any dua, I will, I will be the one who answer you. Right? And Allah says in the Quran, that, call Him, لكم, call Him, and I, I will answer you. Udhuni astajib lakum. Call me and I will answer you. Allah has promised He will answer you. So if you dictate to Allah what you want, is Allah saying no? You should not dictate? No, you can ask for anything. Allah, I want a house. I want this, I want that. You can ask for anything that you want. Allah is not saying no restrictions. Yes, it would have been better if you understood that Allah, you know better than me and you give me what is best for me. That's different level of marifat. But if you ask for things, Allah is not going to stop you. In fact, Allah likes it when you ask Him, when you dictate Him for things. And the reason He allowed you, one of the wisdom behind dua. Understand this, when the, one of the wisdom behind dua is that when you ask Allah and dictate to Allah things, Allah is ready to submit to your dictation. Can you believe that? Allah is saying, ask me anything, I will answer you, I will reply to you, I will fulfill your wishes. So you can dictate to Allah and say that, Allah, I want this, do this for me, do this for me. Allah is doing it. Allah is answering your du'as. Allah, why are you listening to us? You know better than us. You know more than us. Why are you listening to us? We are dictating to you and you are alright with it. And Allah is saying, listen, I allowed you to do that. I want you to dictate to me and I will listen to whatever you say. But if you understand that I'm listening to you, that I'm submitting to you whatever you dictate to me, then at least give me that haq and that right that when I say something that you also submit to it. On one hand, we are making dua to Allah, Allah, do this, do this, and Allah is saying this. Now when Allah tells you to do something, why aren't you submitting? You dictate to Allah all the time and He's doing that. And when He dictates to you, then why are you saying, well, Allah, I don't like this, I don't want this, I don't think this is right. My friends, Islam is about whatever Allah dictates, I submit to it. And in return, Allah is saying, you make dua and I'll submit to your wishes. You see that? This is Allah's mercy on us. This is Allah's mercy on us. You know, a, if you are a father at home and your children ask you for things, give it to them. You know, you will see what is right and wrong for them. If they ask for something wrong, you would try to abstain from it. But if you give them, then remind them that, listen, Whatever you wanted, I submitted to your wishes. Now when I want something, you should also listen to me. When I ask you to do homework, do your homework. When I used to go to sleep, go to sleep. When I ask you to stop watching TV, stop watching TV, stop playing games. Why? Because every time you ask me, I submitted to your wish. So why aren't you doing this? See, this is how you train your child. This is how Allah is training us as a creation. He's saying, I'm, if I tell you to do something, at least give me that right as Allah, as your creator, that you should listen to me. So, the first thing we need to understand is that we have to listen to what he says. Islam is not that, okay, I think this is right. And I'll explain where this comes in. So when we do ita'at, our job is to do ita'at of the Ahlul Bayt, of the Imams. Whatever they say, we do. Now, in order to do that, we have to learn what they say. We have to uh, understand what they say. And the only way to understand what they say is to go and do your scholarly research on it and become a mushtahad. Become a mushtahad so you understand what Islam says and practice it. Now, if Allah had said that, listen, do what I said, and if He say, Allah, we don't know. Uh, okay, go and learn. 
Allah, but I have a job, I have children, I can't go and learn. Or, I am unable to learn, I'm too old to learn. What should I do then? I, can, I can't understand deen, I cannot practice the deen through understanding, what should I do then? The principle Allah gives, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He says, ask those who, who know if you do not know. If you do not know, ask those who know. So now Allah says, okay, you cannot practice Islam through understanding. Now, I will, out of my mercy and out of my rahmat, have some mercy on you and say, okay, you don't have to practice Islam according to understanding. At least go to those who understand. Now those who understand are Ahlul Bayt. Now if Ahlul Bayt are not here, then what we should do Allah? Then Allah says, now I'm giving you another way to do what I say, to practice what I say. And this is called Taqlid. This is called Taqlid. What is Taqlid? Taqlid is doing what Allah says, not through understanding, but following those who have understanding. This is Taqlid. Allah says, at least follow those, emulate those who know, who have knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, ask them, then you'll see this. But the only shart is this, the only condition is this. When you ask them and when they tell you, after that do not ask why. My friends, this is where I want to get you this point to. Don't ask why. Just do what they say. And when it comes to taqlid, the issue of taqlid, people have problem with this thing. Why shouldn't I ask why? Why shouldn't I ask why? Why should I do whatever they tell me to do? Why should I do whatever fatwa they give me I practice? Why is that? Why cannot I, I ask why? And I'm saying, listen, this is the idea. The idea is that when they tell you, do it without asking why. This is what I want to explain today, my friends. This question of why shouldn't you ask why and what is taqlid? Just this much I want you to understand very carefully what is taqlid. What is taqlid again? I am repeating it. The definition of taqlid is to follow a mujtahid without asking him why. Why should I do this? Why do you say that? Don't ask that, just do it. People have problem with this. Now I want to tell you something in order to explain that better so it comes into your mind what is taqlid and where do we do taqlid? Send me salawats. My friends, I explained to you the definition of taqlid. Now let me apply it in your own life. In your own life, I'll give some examples so that every one of you can understand. You know, uh, I was sick and feeling really bad. I had this stomach ache, very bad. I was in pain. So, I take some medicine, some Alka-Seltzer, this and that, didn't work. So I went to the doctor. I went to the doctor and uh, I said, yeah, this is the problem. He looked at me, checked me out, whatever he had to do, he did. And then after that, he wrote a prescription. I took that prescription and I did what he asked me to do. Now tell me, if I had gone to the doctor and if he gave a prescription, in all of this whole process, did I ask him why? Why should I take this? Nagra will look at me and say, listen, I'm writing this prescription, take it. Why should I take this? <laughs> okay, here, give that back to me, go to another doctor. I'm the doctor, I'm telling you, this is the prescription you need. Go and take it. Now you see, when you go to the doctor, you don't ask why. You'll be like, what's the matter with you? You ask me why? 
What do you mean, why? I'm the doctor. I'm telling you, this is what you need to take. You see, you never ask why when you go to the doctor. You see, you never ask why. Now, just to indulge in this issue, I will just raise one more question regarding this. Let's say you do ask why. And let's say he started to explain to you why. He says, listen, this medicine that I'm giving you has these chemicals in it which react to these chemicals in your body that is going to make this effect in your body. You look at him with wide eyes and look straight through him and says, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Speak English. He said, I am speaking English. <laughs> this is English. You want me to speak another language? I am explaining to you in English. Why? But you see, me being the doctor who have gone through a studies to learn different effects of different chemicals on different things in your body, understand things and have the basis to understand it. You, as a layman, even if I explain to you, would not be able to understand it because you don't have the premise to understand that. You don't have the premise to understand that. Yes, go and study in school and then you will understand why I'm doing this. I can explain to you and you will understand why I'm doing this. You see, that's why a doctor never explains to his patients why. It's useless for him to do that. Even if he does that, he's wasting his time and the time of the patient. He's only fooling them. But if a student of medicine goes and asks a doctor, he will explain to him and the student will understand why he's doing that. Why? Because he has the premise and the foundation to understand the reason behind this. See, my friends, this is the reason why when you go to the doctor, you don't ask why. So what are you doing here? This is called taqlid. It's called taqlid. Right? I'll give you another example. Right? So that my young ones here, the youngsters here can understand also. You know, in my life I played football, American football. Right? And I played it in school and my kids also play it. That's the sport that I grew up with here. And all of, now, now amongst you all I know that soccer or what you call as football is more uh, relevant but my example I'm giving you is with American football I was at someone's house just like I'm here in Salt Lake City in another city giving speeches and I was there I didn't stay at a hotel I was staying at someone's house he had children and the kids were watching the playoffs a game on TV they're watching the playoffs when they were watching the playoffs, I sat with them, acting ignorant. So I said, well, what are you watching? He says, football. Don't you know this is football? I said, no, explain to me. What is football? You know, but we, I knew the game, played the game, but I wanted to teach them something. So that, you know, some testing can be done. So they said, it's called football. I looked at the game and said, well, if it's called football, why aren't they playing with their feet? Why are they playing with their hands? No, 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 it's called football, you know. Uh, it's called football because the ball is 11 and a half inches long. It's almost one feet, that's why they call it football. Call it football, you know, that's why they call it football. It's 11 and a half inches, the ball. And because of because one almost one foot, they call it football. I said, well, if it's not actually one foot, why don't they call it 11 and a half inch ball? <laughs> yeah, call it 11 and a half inch ball, that will be a more appropriate, right? He said, listen, that's how they named it. So we just have to take the name, just as it is. All right, I mean, okay. Uh, so, explain to me about the game. So I said, well, there are 11 players on each side. On this side, there are 11. On that side, there are 11. I said, why are there only 11 players? You know, let's make it 15. Have more people in there, more fun. He said, no, it has to be 11. I said, why 11? Make it 15. He said, no, it can't be 15. It has to be 11. Wow. What, is this a force or compulsion? You know? No, it has to be 11. I said, all right, all right, let's go on. What else? Well, it's 100 yards long. The field is 100 yard long. And this is, well, I said, why is it 100 yard? Make it longer so they can run more. 
He said, Mohana, this is, this is 100 yards. Whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. <coughs> all right, all right, let's go, go forward. What else? What else? They said, well, you know, if you cross the end zone, if you come to the end zone, you get six points. The six, that's kind of odd. Why don't they make it 10 so it's rounded, you know? Six is a strange number. Let's make it 10. Let's make it 10. He said, Mohana, you can't make it 10. It's six. I said, who, who, why? Why is it six four? Let's make it 10. Listen, that's the way they made the rules and you have to follow it. <laughs> All right, you know? Fine, man. <laughs> you know? What? Okay, let's go forward. What is this, you know? Well, you know, I mean, you know, uh, if you throw the ball, then you're intercepted and this and that, you know? You have to catch the ball like this. I said, well, well, what about one top, you know? I mean, if they, if the ball the bounce once, if they bounce the ball one time, let's catch it that way. So, you no, know, you can't do that. You have to throw the ball full. You know? <laughs> Listen, the rules are rules. You have to follow them. That's it. I said, okay, okay, okay. You know what? Who made these rules? Uh, we don't know who made the rules. So, you don't know who made the rules. You, you don't know who even made the rules and but you are willing to follow them even without asking them why did you ever ask those people why did they make the rules the way they did but they made the rules and you follow them without even asking why I said, this is called taklid this is called taklid you're doing taklid and when you're doing taklid of that, that guy who made these rules for football, basketball, he was an alcoholic, drunk, homosexual, and that rule that he's making, you are following blindly without even asking why. And you have no problem with that. And it's like your religion now, that yes, this is what I'm going to do, that's it. If I understand this, <laughs> this is taklid. This is called taklid. Right? This is called taklid. You don't ask why there. Right? You just follow it. You just do it. I'll give another example. Sometimes, okay, you know, you can say that the doctor is an educated person. He is master in his field, this and that. Okay, let me give you an example of an ignorant person. Illiterate person, someone who's a high school dropout. Right? And you follow this person blindly. Right? You are on your way to dinner to someone's house. I invited you. If I have a house in Salt Lake, inshallah, I will invite you. Right? When you come to my house, my house will not be near. It will be very far in the uh, boondock somewhere. Right? So you want to come over there to my house, so obviously you'll get lost. Now when you get lost, I, uh, GPS also doesn't work there. <laughs> so far away. <laughs> the GPS took us in the wrong place. It happened once, you know. I went to a wedding in New Jersey, and you know, we were with the groom and he was in the limo and there was a line of cars behind him and we were on our way to the masjid to read the nikah and we came into this dead alley and uh, all the cars are inside there and like we asked the limo driver, I said, what's going on? He says, this is where it is, that's where the GPS is showing me <laughs> and we were lost. We got lost three times there. We were supposed to reach there 11 o'clock, we reached there 1 o'clock at night. Right? So you come to my house, GPS doesn't work. So what happens? Now what happens? When you're looking at this GPS, it doesn't work. Now, you see there's no one around you and then you find a gas station. You go inside the gas station, let me ask for directions here. And you meet this guy who's the clerk there. The clerk is a redneck high school dropout. He can't even speak two sentences right. Right? He's illiterate. You ask him, hey listen, I'm looking for this road, this address, where is it? He says, listen, go uh, right and make a left and then, you know, then the house is there. Now tell me, would you ask him, why? How do you know? <laughs> would you ask him that? How do you, how can I believe you? What do I know? You won't ask him that, right? If you ask him that, he'll say, hey, listen, man, there's the door, that's the road, go find your own way. I live here, I know the ways. You won't ask me ways, I'll tell you. Just do what I said without asking me why. My brothers and sisters, this is called taklid. You're doing taklid. Yeah, I can go on giving examples now. But what I want you to understand is this, my friends. Everything that you do in life, you're making taklid. 
There's nothing in your life you're not doing that you're not doing taqlid of. Everything you do, you're doing taqlid. You follow others without asking them why. Everywhere you do that, you follow kafirs, you follow non-Muslims, you follow gays, you follow everyone without asking them why. Why is it that when it only comes to Allah and the mushtahad, you ask them why? We have an issue with that. Why is it that the only place that we have an issue with taqlid is when it comes to Islam and not other things? Every other thing we do, we are making taqlid of. We are muqallid of someone. This is taqlid, my friends. Allah is saying, listen, I'm not asking you to follow kuffar or people with no character or those who are charitable. I am telling you to follow someone who's the best amongst you, someone who's the most knowledgeable, who's muttaqi, who's mu'min, who's reliable, who's trustworthy. If you can't follow him, then you are ready to follow these people. My friends, this is taqlid. Understand what taqlid is. Do not get things in your mind that, oh, you know, why should we make taqlid to a mushtahid? Oh, you are making taqlid to everyone in life. Everyone you are making life. When you come to the masjid, you are making taqlid. Yes. I want to sponsor food tomorrow in Ramadan. <laughs> Example I'm giving. <laughs> Don't say that tomorrow is sponsoring the food tomorrow is so come. <laughs> right? So now what happens is that when I tell you, okay, you know, let's sponsor the food, alhamdulillah, I want to give sponsor food. So, I go to the EC. The EC says, well, you know, you need to talk to Brother Maisam, he's the one who makes the food. I say, all right, let me go to Brother Maisam. So I go to Brother Maisam and say, so Brother Maisam, I want to cook food, how many people are coming tomorrow? He'll be like, you know, two, three hundred people, alhamdulillah, you know, so what do I need? To make this. He, uh, then he says, okay, you know, I need this much meat, this much rice, this much this, this much that, this much this. Now tell me. If I tell him, why this much? Why are you asking for this? Why are you asking for that? He said, listen, I'm the one who makes the food here. I know how much goes in it. Why are you asking if I just give me the bread, I'll make it for you. Now you say, Chashm. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> what is that for? Why don't you ask him why? Why don't you argue with him? The issue is that he's the one who knows. And that's why you make taqlid to him. You don't ask him why, you just give it to him. He asked for this much, I give it to him. Why? Because of the fact that he knows what he's doing, I don't know. My friends, wherever there's knowledge, then ignorance always submits to knowledge without asking why. Whether that knowledge is in the medicine field, whether that knowledge is in directions, whether that knowledge is in cooking, whether that knowledge anything. Wherever ignorance in jahl meets ilm and knowledge, jahl submits to it without asking why, blindly. This is the natural order, the nature of jahl and ilm. This is the nature of uh, ignorance and knowledge. This is what it is my friends. I'll give an example so you understand this better if you send me salawats. <laughs> My friends, Alhamdulillah, all of you are mu'min people, muttaqi people. Right? MashaAllah, you're here in Laylatul Qadr and praying to Allah, hoping for His maghfirat, His mercy and forgiveness. Good people that I should listen to. Now, if I fall sick here, if I fall sick over here, then all of you are all muttaqi, all of you are all good, mu'min people, but none of you is a doctor. None of you is a doctor. And all of you together decided that Morana needs a surgery right now, an operation right now. He needs to be cut open. We're going to cut him up. And then, now all of you are muttaqi. And then there's one doctor who comes by who is a mushrik. He's a mushrik doctor. He comes by, he says, no, no need for operation. And all of you said, no, surgery, cut him up. And he's saying, no, let's not cut him up. No need for surgery. Now tell me, who would I follow? Would I follow this Jamaat of Mu'mineen Muttaqi people or would I follow that Mujrik? <laughs> Who will I listen to? My friend, understand this. You see, even Iman, even Taqwa doesn't come in front of knowledge. 
They have to submit to knowledge because the knowledge is that thing which makes ignorance submit to it. This is my friends, the whole idea behind taqlid. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلُ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't know, ask someone who knows. This is the principle. Ignorant, when you are ignorant about something, ask someone. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with that. And we do it every day in our lives. In everything we make taqlid. If we shouldn't have a problem, it's, it's when we have to follow mushtahid. Why is it that there, our mu'mineen have a problem? When a mushtahid says something and gives a fatwa and says that this is what hadith and ayat are saying, then he says, ah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Oh, why aren't you saying this everywhere else in your life? Why is it only here that you say this? My friends, this is the ploy of shaitan. This is the, he makes you forget that you're making taqlid and everything in life. That when now you have to make taqlid of a mushtahed, now he comes to you and says, oh, you, you have aql also. But where was your aql when you asked me directions? Why wasn't your aql working when you were asking that clerk directions? He was an ignorant high school dropout redneck. And you were following him blindly. And you didn't say, I don't agree with you. There. And why is it that we are raising this issue here? See, this is the issue, my friends, about taqlid. We need to understand. Taqlid is natural. Taqlid is what we do every day. And Allah is saying that, listen, the one that I want you to make taqlid of is someone who is not only knowledgeable, but reliable and trustworthy, whose whole life is in front of everyone that they can vouch for him. Then we should have enough trust in him to say that, Alhamdulillah, we will do what he says. Allah didn't give his deen in the hands of people who are unreliable, untrustworthy. Allah gave his deen in the hands of people who are reliable, who have proven their character, who have proven themselves. So that when a person is following them, knowing that his akhirat is in question, so at least they should have trust in him. My friends, this trust that you have in mujtahid, this trust is called taqlid. This is called taqlid. This is what Allah wants from you. Otherwise, He says, okay, you don't want to do taqlid, go and become a mushtahad. Go and become a mushtahad. You don't need to make taqlid. You already know. You know, if I know the directions from here to my house, I don't need to ask you for it. I know them. But if I don't know them, then I'll come and ask you. My friends, this is how we practice Islam. Why taqlid is important? But taqlid is the only way we can practice Islam. Only way we can practice, and you do taqlid in your life anyway. There are people who say, oh, we don't make taqlid, we just go with the imams. Baba, what, the imams came and told you? When did the imam meet you? And they make up things also. I heard this from people, he said, listen, uh, if you make dua to Imam Zamana at night about a fiqhi issue, then by the morning he'll give you the answer. <laughs> Tell me, where did the imam say this, and why are you making this up? Why are you making these things up? Why are you doing, trying to do these things when they gave you an easy way? They said, you don't have to work that hard. The mushtahid has done the work for you. He gave you a tawzihul masail. He says, take this and just read it and practice it. Now there are those who say, well, no, we don't make taqlid. Right? And they call themselves different things like akhbaris and this and that. My question to them is very simple. Tell me, do you pray? They say, yes, we pray. Okay, simple enough. Where did you learn how to pray from? Where did you learn how to pray from? And usually the answer is, well, my mother taught me or my father taught me. Well, then you're making taqlid to your mother and your father. You see, the wahi didn't come to you, revelation didn't come to you, you're making taqlid of your mother then. You're making taqlid of your father. Oh no, I read it in a book. So you're making taqlid of that book. You have not learned it from Ahl al-Bayt. You have learned it from another source. And whatever source you follow is what you're making taqlid of. There's no way but to make taqlid in this world. You cannot practice Islam in any other way. Either be a mujtahid or make taqlid. There's no third way of practicing Islam. 
Just one issue over here I want to clear. Ihtiyat. Because in books of figures are do ihtiyat. That's the third way. What is ihtiyat? Let me explain that to you. And I'm... We'll end over here. What is ihtiyat? Because they say in the books of fiqh, when you read it, you will modernize saying there's only two ways, ijtihad and taqlid. Well, what's this ihtiyat then? We'll do ihtiyat. Well, let me tell you what ihtiyat is. You know what ihtiyat is? And who does ihtiyat? If you really want to make your life hard, harder than what it is, do ihtiyat. What is ihtiyat? You learn the rulings of all the mujtahid who are alive today, learn all their rulings, and take the hardest one and say, I'll do this. That's called ihtiyat. Meaning that if one mujtahid says this is mustahab, the other says it's wajib, then you have to consider it wajib. Do ihtiyat. Oh, 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 we already have enough problems in America. <laughs> Why do you want to make it harder for yourself? Why do you want to make it difficult for yourself? Make your life easier. You can't become a mujtahid. You can't do ishtihad because we are too old or we don't have time. Then at least follow someone who has done ishtihad. Make your life easy. Allah is saying, this is a mercy I have on you. Taqlid is my rahmat on you. This is my rahmat on you, I'm allowing you to do this. Otherwise, if I wanted, I could have asked everyone, go and become a mujtahid and understand Islam and then follow. He had the right to do that. But this is his mercy, he said, no, you can make taqlid of someone who knows. To make your life easy. We shouldn't have a problem. We should be thanking Allah. Allah, thank you for giving me this option. Thank you. This is your mercy you have given me this option. Alhamdulillah. My akhirat is saved because of this option. Otherwise I would be a fool that I don't understand your deen and I'm doing something that I have no clue about. My friends, this is what taqlid is. And I want you to understand what this is so that we know that yeah, this is Allah's way of making Islam easy for us. Otherwise, you know, you know how hard, I explained yesterday how hard it is to become a mujtahid. This is his way of doing it. So, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the blessing to be on the right paths. Give us the wisdom to understand his guidance. Hasten the very appearance of our Imam. Make us his helper when he comes. Wa'akhiru da'bana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Okay, we have, uh, you know, uh, inshallah the amal we're going to start next. Uh, but just, I'll want to take the five minutes to see if anyone has any questions. From today onwards, we'll be asking uh, questions, inshallah, for five minutes. Anyone who wants to ask any questions regarding this topic or anything regarding to Laylatul Qadr and other things, inshallah, you know, so that uh, it could be better for us, inshallah. Any questions? So now everyone's clear about taqlid. <laughs> Inshallah. So, uh, I think we'll make a break for wudu and uh, Inshallah get ready for the amal by 11 o'clock. Inshallah. Salawat al-Muhammad.